Hey, so I'd like to do a video regarding hole in the head disease because there's a lot of stuff out there on hole in the head disease and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me and I'll tell you why. So hole in the head disease when you see it is generally in some of the bigger cichlids. Um, Oscars are really prone to it. Other uh, fish uh, with kind of fleshy heads like meaty kind of heads and I'm not talking about the wen and that sort of thing necessarily I'm talking about around the creases and folds and the gill covers and the meat around the eyes and nostrils um, those kinds of fish in those kinds of areas will start to get erosions uh, I don't know those, those grooves will start to get a little bit deep I'm going to dig up some pictures of, uh, of, of a hole in the head disease uh, some of the more classic cases and uh, show you those well, so for the longest time, it was thought that that was hexameda. Well, hexameda is a little protozoan parasite. It's pretty darn annoying. It can damage tissues. Kind of, um, I, I can explain. Well, here's my point. I would be called out on cases to wholesalers and that sort of thing to see fish with hole-in-the-head disease and hobbyist tanks, and people would bring fish over. And hexameda was there maybe half the time and the other half the time there was no hexameda at all so wait a minute how hexameda is supposed to be a uh, hole in the head is supposed to be a hexameda disease I happen to have the uh, be of the opinion that hexameda likes a stressed out hurt fish a vulnerable immune suppressed fish just to be hexameda on that fish I also think that the lesions, the hole in the head lesions, would heal up if the hexameda wasn't in them. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm kind of sure the hexameda doesn't call, cause hole in the head. I kind of have a way to prove it, actually. But I'm, I'm kind of sure that hexameda likes a stressed fish, and I think the hexameda keeps the lesions open but I'm not sure that hexameda actually causes the lesions. Here's how I know. You could put hexameda infected fish, uh, excuse me, you could put infectious hexameda in with the fish and they wouldn't get hole in the head disease if the water quality was good. Does that make sense? So you can put all the hexameda you want in. It's not a primary pathogen. It's not going to start hole in the head disease. And the reason I think that matters so much is because I don't want somebody whose fish has hexameda to think that if they put metronidazole in there, it's going to kill the hexameda and the fish is going to get over hole in the head disease because that's not how it works. In fact, like I'm saying, I'm not even sure hexameda is really the culprit. So you might say, what is the culprit? Well, it's high levels of background pollution and nematodes and crappy water and a pH that's out of range and stress. And that's what it is. So here's my point. People have recovered people uh, fish with hexameda uh, hole in the head disease. I'm using them interchangeably. How awful is that? People are recovering hole in the head disease fish simply by moving them into less crowded facilities with better water quality, higher levels of aeration, minimal organics in the system, clearance of co, uh, comorbidities with parasites, and maybe a deworming. And those fish are getting better. Do you know, it's kind of like birds with their beak and feather. If you took a bird with beak and feather a lot of them and just released them in the jungle, they would get over it because it's so much of an environmental problem and, and hole in the head is that. Hole in the head, you can just about bank on it with certain species of fish in facilities that are too small with high levels of organics. And you might say, hang on, you're talking about high levels of organics, high levels of background pollution. What am I supposed to do with that? Okay. To know if you have high levels of organics, look closely at the water, look at the glass. You might need a magnifying glass or just good young eyeballs. And what you're looking for is tiny little worms writhing around in the water. When you see that, those are little nematodes. They're 
pretty harmless, but they speak to a deeper problem, and that is high levels of undigested, undecayed, unused organic material. So, in other words, there's got to be stuff for those worms to eat for them to proliferate like that. And a lot of times you can put that water with those worms in it in a clear jar in the sun, and you can just see those worms teeming and rising in there. This is so common in tanks that contain turtles and carnivorous fish that are kept in facilities too small. These little, tiny, wriggly, very, very small worms. They are an excellent indicator directly proportional to the amount of organics in the system and directly proportional to the likelihood and incidence of hole in the head, independent of hexameda. Okay. Then you might say, well, okay, what, what do you suggest I do to measure your, quote, high levels of background pollution? Well, there, there, you know, the thing is, that's a synthesis. Background pollution is a, is, would be a measurement of a little bit low dissolved oxygen, a little bit high carbon dioxide, um, high background protein levels, the accumulation of a lot of organics in the system, uh, growth inhibitory compounds that some people say are pheromones, growth inhibitory pheromones. Okay, let's go with that because it's been neither proven seriously guys not proven but then again not disproven either so I don't know we can go with that so you might say okay Eric what could I tie what measurement could I make that is most closely related to high levels of background pollution and I would say nitrates yeah nitrates typically in uh, an overfed under filtrated incomplete ecosystem that doesn't really have either enough algae or plants and things are kind of building up and you don't have the purification systems in place to keep your nitrates down you probably are concurrently looking at high levels of protein looking at high levels of carbon dioxide lower than average levels of uh, oxygen we don't even want to go into redox potentials oh my god i remember the fights about redox potentials um, so if you're checking your nitrates and they're high and you can even see little worms in the water and you can smell the water and it doesn't smell like something that you would swim in or even drink um, I think that's an environment that's pretty good for hole in the head uh, well you know and hexameter too I don't disagree that hexameter is a player in hole in the, in the head. I just disagree that that's what it takes to set hole in the head up. Because I have the opinion that hole in the head is a stress-related condition in suboptimal environments. And because I have seen, without treating hexameda at all, or even in the absence of hexameda, that people are having luck um, just moving the fish into larger facilities with more room, fresh water, higher water turnover, better oxygenation, better levels of feeding, lower levels of crowding, basically getting the stress off the fish and improving the environment. And hole in the head goes away. And like I said earlier, the reason it matters so much to me is because I don't want somebody to oversimplify it to make you think you're going to save all your fish just by putting metronidazole in there and killing off the hexameda. Hexameda is a formidable player. It kills a lot of fish. I get that, but you're going to have to do a lot more than metronidazole to clear hexameda and hole in the head disease. I think that's it, but if not, please leave a note in the um, comment section. If you want me to go into a little bit more detail on how to treat hexameda, I'd be happy to. In fact, I'm probably going to do a video on hexameda and spironucleus and its impact on um, brackish water fish and on discus. Um, who else does that work on? Some goldfish, intestinal version of hexameda. Um, I'll get to that. Uh, this video is about hole in the head disease. And I will do another video on hexameda, but if I've forgotten something, please leave a note in the comments. I appreciate it.